I'm Baratunde Thurston, and this is Clarify, the show helping you make an informed decision on the way to the polls and hopefully providing a good soundtrack for the ride. Today, we're sitting down with Chicago rapper Vic Mensa to talk about policing in America. Police killings of black people have left many outraged over what appears to be a pattern of racial discrimination. It's a complicated issue, and it's important to understand the facts and the human consequences. Let's look at some numbers. For black Americans, police use force at a rate 3.6 times higher than for white Americans, and 2.5 times higher than for Americans overall. But black people aren't 2.5 times more likely to commit more crimes. Instead, some say cops just aren't as committed to stopping the same crimes in white neighborhoods. We are not targeting communities of color, we are targeting behavior. They're targeting behavior with controversial tactics some say are discriminatory. Tactics like stop and frisk and broken windows policing. That's the theory that says pursuing low-level crimes prevents more serious ones. But while the police are targeting this behavior, who's tracking police behavior? We'll talk to an NYPD officer about his experience on the force. But first, Vic Mensa told me about his childhood in Chicago and his relationship with the police. Vic Mensa, it's a pleasure to meet you. My pleasure, man. Thank you for coming here. Thank you for having me. Uh, talk to me a bit about your upbringing in the city of Chicago. Yeah, I'm from the south side of Chicago, neighborhood called Hyde Park, so. Oh, you're Obama's neighbor. Yeah. yeah. I'm like six blocks from Obama, you know, and equal distance from Project Housing and Section 8 Housing, across the street, really. And so I was kind of in between two worlds in a lot of ways. Also, my mother is from upstate New York, and my father's from West Africa. So racially, I was in between two worlds, and geographically in Chicago, I was as well. There's kids on bikes, 12 years old, selling crack to fiends, and I'm going to a magnet school. So, you know, it's kind of all, it's a lot of things going on at once in my childhood. Did it feel like two distinct worlds when you were in it? Yes, it did. Growing up, I didn't feel so racial when I was a kid. I kind of used to want to be just one or the other. I used to want to be fully black or fully white. I was like, this shit is confusing. It doesn't make sense. Like, I can't dance all that good. <laughs> like Obama. But then I get kicked out of the sleepover as the only black kid. So yeah, it was around the time that I was like 12, 13 years old um, that I think I really began to feel black because I started to get treated different. And police would see me outside of my school, and if I had my hands in my hoodie, called me over to the car. I got my hands in my hoodie. He's like, take your hands out your hoodie before I punch you in the fucking face. I'm like, That's how they said hello. That was hello yes. in Chicago police. Speak. Chicago police to a 12 year old. What was your first reaction to the severe shooting of Laquan McDonald? I was sickened, you know, just to see him empty that clip in that child as he lay motionless. And I immediately took to the streets. I would never want to make the passing of a person into like an opportunity, but Laquan's murder really, really gave us something to stand for. There wasn't a lot that you could say. You know, the, the, the picture told a thousand words and this was really a chance for the world to see what we see and for us to let our voices be heard. How do you absorb the cumulative effect of not just in Chicago, but the Alton Sterlings and the Philando Castiles and the Renisha McBrides. Yeah. How does that hit you and how does that hit your art? I try to make music or not try, I do make music from the heart, just from a real place because that's, that's what matters to me. Yeah. But in my real life though, it's, 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 it's hard to cope with, but then I was kind of losing my mind for a second after I saw that second video, the Philando video of him just a corpse in that car. I had a moment where I just broke down in the hotel room, just like hysterically kind of crying because I felt all of the hatred towards black people upon myself. Like I just felt like I was holding, I felt like I was holding all of that weight. I was listening to and then reading Shades of Blue, one of your tracks, and you draw this line between Flint and police and a lack of accountability. Can you talk more about how you, what made you link those in the way that you did? Because to an outside superficial observer, they would say they don't have anything to do with each other. Right, so I ask a question in the last line of the first verse where I say, 
and everybody broke, so we in the same boat. But would they let that bitch sink if we was white? It got me shades to blue. Because I was, you know, it's kind of like a question I think I probably know the answer to, in that there's a, there's a socioeconomic aspect to oppression by far, but you can't remove the racial aspect from it. This country was built upon the backs of slaves, yeah. and we can never act as if that's not affecting the present day. Children have died, and you've made a grave mistake that I don't even know if it's all that much of a mistake, you know? They don't care about our lives, poor people's lives, and specifically black people's lives. So that's how accountability ties in with the police officers because they show over and over again that they don't care about our lives. How do you maintain a sense of, uh, I won't even call it optimism, but momentum to just live? How do you keep moving? You know, I'm, I'm inspired by, by extremely strong people. Like the people that I look to as my mentors are like Malcolm X and Huey Newton in these books that I read over and over as a kid. I have to be charged by struggle and being somebody that cares and I, I want to see improvements and I want to see changes and I want to help make those changes happen. It, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm motivated by this struggle. And this is, I wake up and I'm reading about this shit. I go to sleep, I'm writing about this shit. I, go through my day arguing about this mm -hmm. shit. Um, so yeah, you know, it's like, this is what keeps me going right now.